Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and as always, I want to thank you for tuning in. UFC 191. I am beyond, as you can tell, I am beyond excited for this for this card, and it's uh, got some very interesting matchup. Um, it's got some uh, it's got some of the best coaches in the game uh, going up against each other, and uh, there is some real opportunity. There is some real opportunity for us to make some money, and uh, my bets and my picks have um, humbly, humbly, I've been on fire this year. You know, plus over over sixty units of profit, um, over twenty percent return on investment, and uh, that's not even the whole picture. It's actually higher than that, but minimum, minimum twenty percent. 20.96% return on investment. So it's been a, uh, a great year, excellent year. And, uh, and I'm thinking that uh, UFC 191 is going to be the, uh, one of those cards where my bets are just on fire. And, uh, and essentially our bets, because if you're watching this video, then that means that you trust my opinion, and you trust my bets, and you trust the way that I lay them out. So I want to thank you for that. And without any further ado, let's dive right into it. UFC 191, Johnson versus Dodson, part two. And let me just say that just as fighters alone, Johnson and Dodson are... Incredible, right? I mean, just, just incredible fighters. But we are also seeing Greg Jackson versus Matt Hume. So the coaching of Greg Jackson and, and Winklejohn. Let's not forget Mike Winklejohn against the coaching of Matt Hume and uh, his assistant coaches, but primarily Matt Hume. So this for me is an unbelievable matchup. It really, really is. And uh, I'll talk about, let's talk about Dodson first. So John Dodson has uh, big time punching power. We all know that. We can see it from watching his fights. Big time punching power and uh, very athletic, very fast. And really, he's probably the only guy at the, in the flyweight division who right now, right now, there's a couple guys I've got my eyes on, but right now, can really give a possibly a challenge for Demetrius Johnson. Now the betting line tells you otherwise because betting line right now is minus 600 Demetrius Johnson, and uh, you can find um, Dotson as high as plus 475. So the betting line is telling you that that um, Dotson has no chance whatsoever, and he's got a shot. You know he does have a shot. Dotson is good. He is fast. Um, he's got big punching power. But he's very limited as to how he can win the fight. You know, he's got to have Demetrius Johnson stay in his range in a very particular, very particular um, distance from him. And he's got to be able to not only keep Johnson there or have Johnson step into that range, but also connect. And that's very two very hard things to do, to have Johnson there to have him, have him still there for a second or two is hard enough, but it could happen. But to land that punch and to have that, that's a little too much. And I really don't think that's going to happen for John Dodson. Um, his last fight against Zach Makovsky, he did not, he didn't win that fight. Um, everybody knows that. And uh, and yeah, you know, he was coming off a layoff, and you know, fighters look rusty, but man, he really did not look good. Now, Demetrius Johnson, on the other, on the other hand, wow. This guy is just unbelievable. He really is, and he really does have the the tools to be considered one of the best pound for pound fighters. <clears throat> he could be a little more aggressive at this point. At this point of his career, he could be a little more aggressive, and I think he will be in this fight. I really do think that Demetrius Johnson will show us a uh, a real sharp, aggressive style. 
And I think Demetrius Johnson can knock out John Dotson in rounds three or four. So I'm going to go with DJ and knockout uh, by knockout in round four. So Demetrius Johnson for the win. Now, if I had to bet this fight, which I always say if I had to bet it, because obviously I don't think you're paying me to just sit on the fence about stuff. And if I had to bet the fight, I would I would bet, and I will be betting, Demetrius Johnson on points. So minus five and a half points, Demetrius Johnson at minus 240. That is going to be my bet. That is going to be my pick because – that's a big, steep, steep line to pay on him. And if Johnson doesn't finish inside the distance, he's probably going to win a decision. So I like that. I like that play. I'll be parlaying it uh, in a couple spots. And uh, and uh, so John Dodson is a pick. Or uh, Demetrius Johnson, very similar. Uh, DJ versus JD. Demetrius Johnson is a pick. Demetrius Johnson is a bet. And uh, he'll be a three-star at minus 240, minus five and a half points. The co-main event. <laughs> Interesting little matchup here between two old heavyweights. The old guard. But, they, you know, somehow they're still relevant. And they're still uh, going to come in here to, to let it go. Um, let's talk about mm, Frank Mir first. Let's talk about Frank Mir. So, Frank Mir. Really... Frank Mir and his last couple appearances, I mean, Todd Duffy, that fight was awesome here in San Diego. Uh, up until that, up until that fight, the up until that particular fight, the fights had been eh, so so. But Frank Mir and Todd Duffy, I'll give them both props. I mean, they really both let it hang, and uh, Frank Mir got rocked, but ultimately he was able to put Todd Duffy away. But Andre Arlovsky is not Todd Duffy. And uh, the way they match up here, Arlovsky, to me, the biggest difference is his speed. Arlovsky's speed over Frank Mears. It's a dangerous fight to bet because they are heavyweights and anything can really happen. But uh, I believe the difference here is the speed. To me, that's what I notice watching their fights. And, um, and I think that'll be the difference here. So I'll, I will be betting Arlovsky, under Arlovsky, and I will also be... Um, Putting him in a parlay. Anthony Johnson versus Jimmy Manua. Wow. Here we go. This one I have a lot to say because I really, really analyze this fight. Um, like I do every other fight, but this one has a special place in my heart because these two fighters I am very familiar with. And uh, Anthony Johnson here is in a bad spot, in my opinion. He's in a really bad spot. Coming off a loss to Daniel Cormier, a fight where Anthony Johnson was has never been more motivated than that for that fight. And uh, gave Cormier his best shot. Cormier ate it. And sure enough, in Anthony Johnson fashion, he gave up his back and tapped out. He's coming off this huge loss, and Jimmy Manoa has looked nothing but unbelievable in the UFC. Um, yeah, his, his opposition hasn't been very good, but um, then again, he really hasn't faced too good of opposition. The only time he really faced a top-tier guy is when he fought Gustafson, and um, that just wasn't that wasn't going to be his night. Gustafson is... is Arguably, top top three should be top three in the world. And uh, on any given night, as, as we watch in the John Jones fight, um, you know anything can happen. Now, MMA math says that Anthony Johnson beat Gustafson, and Gustafson beat Manoa. So then, Johnson should beat Manoa. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. I don't believe it. And uh, you might be thinking to yourself, now what? Now what? What? How? How? How is Anthony Johnson going to beat Jimmy Man Or uh, how is Jimmy Manoa going to pull off the upset at plus 510? Plus 510 at dimes right now. How? How is Jimmy Manoa? So let, let me tell you how. First off, Jimmy Manoa's motivation. 
is going is off the off the charts right now. It's just just very very motivated for this fight. He knows what it means. It ultimately means that if he wins here, he could be in line for a title shot. And this is what this guy has wanted all along to be the champ, to to really represent for not only himself but his country, his family, and. Uh, I've just been really impressed with him. Like I said, other than that Gustafson fight, um, that Blackwich fight, he was injured in that one. But um, other than that, I mean, he's just a powerful, just just very good, very strong in the clinch with his strikes, with his knees, just very very good. And um, and so you've got this guy who's very very prepared for the fight, extremely prepared. And in Anthony Johnson. You have a guy who has shown us that he quits. Had is coming off with, uh, like I said, a, a loss to the cha to the now champ, and and we wonder. You know, I wonder. I ask myself if Anthony Johnson were to lose to Jimmy Manuel, when would it be, and what type of matchup? And this, to me, is the the particular time that he would lose to him. I think that Jimmy Manuel will i think that in round one they'll exchange and then somewhere around two anthony johnson will shoot for a takedown and perhaps he already will have had a takedown or two because i think anthony johnson will probably want this fight on the mat i think in round one it'll stay on the feet i think on round two that's when johnson will really be desperate for the shot and i think manawa can can sink in a guillotine so I've got Jimmy Manoa winning by submission in round two. And I've got him at plus 510. He's going to be a three-star pick. And he will. I mean, willing, willingly, he will win us some... Big time money tomorrow, tonight, whenever you're watching this. And uh, I am very, very excited for this matchup. I think that um, he can pull off the upset, and I'm calling it. I'm calling the upset here. Jimmy Manoa beats Anthony Johnson, and I will have not only a straight bet on him, but a couple of props. So Jimmy Manoa plus 510, two units to win, a little over 10. Jimmy Mano won scorecards equal no action at plus 503, 0.30 units to win 1.51. Jimmy Mano won plus 3.5 points, plus 320, 0.30 units to win 0.96. And Jimmy Mano won by submission, a tenth of a unit to win 1.77 units. So that's plus 1770. And for the next one, now mind you, if he loses, he's not going to make or break our night. Really, I mean... If he loses, he's not going to break the night. If he wins, pretty much, it will pretty much be auto. Yeah, it will be auto profit. So, hey, not a bad spot to be in. Jan Blackwich versus Corey Anderson. Now, this is an interesting matchup. You know, at first I looked at it and I thought, man, Jan's going to win this fight. But then once I did my homework and dove into it, I thought to myself, wow, Corey Anderson really does have a shot here, especially if he fixes his cardio issue. And uh, Corey Anderson trains with a great coach, a very, very good coach, coach that I have a lot of faith in. And uh, ultimately, I think that, um, kind of like how Matt Hume said it, that uh, that he feels like he's playing a video game and, and he's a player and Demetrius Johnson's the one he controls. I think Mark Henry here will control Corey Anderson. I think Corey Anderson can win a decision. I think Jan is a bit slow for the division. I think Corey will use his wrestling his, uh, his takedowns, putting up, putting him up against the fence, taking him down, repeat, and I think Corey will win a um, a decision. So Corey Anderson as the underdog is my pick, and Corey Anderson as my underdog is the bet. I got him by decision. Paige Van Zant versus Alex Chambers. Uh, this one I don't want to spend too much time on it. I will not be betting Paige Van Zant. I have zero interest in laying that kind of price on this girl. Um, and uh, I do think she can win by knockout in round three. But uh, the price is ridiculous. I will not be betting it whatsoever. Not do not bet. And I almost, since I don't have any money on it, I almost, actually, 
not almost. I do want Alex Chambers, Alex Chambers to pull the upset off. I would love that, not only because she's such a favorite, but because Paige Van Zandt really annoys me, and uh, I don't like to watch her interviews. Um, I don't like to. I mean, watching her fights exciting, but watching her talk and her interview and her interviews, my God, I'd rather just. I would rather not. So I'll be rude for Alex Chambers. Um, if I do not bet, if I had to bet it, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't bet it whatsoever. Um, if I had to, I guess I would bet Alex Chambers real small. But uh, I'm not gonna waste my money on that. So I'll be rooting for Alex Chambers. Paige Van Zandt will probably win. I think she'll probably win in round three. Um, but maybe before. It's just, it's just ridiculous. So do not bet. Ross Pearson versus Paul Felder. Now that is an interesting fight. That fight really interests me because we've got two guys who are, um, well, not two guys. One guy who is really exciting. Uh, I really like Paul Felder. I really like watching him fight. I bet him when he fought Danny Castillo as an underdog. I bet against him when he fought Edson Barboza as, um, I don't remember, I think he was an underdog also. Slight underdog. Very, very slight. Basically a pick him. And then I'll be betting him here, betting him here as a favorite, very big favorite, but with good reason. You know, all things being equal, Paul Felder, if he connects on Russ Pearson, he's going to put him out. He's going to put him to sleep. And uh, I think Paul Felder can also win a decision. Russ Pearson, I, I just, I think he is on. After this fight, he'll be on a downward slope. If he already is in a downward slope in his career, um, so I like Felder here. I like him to win a decision. And uh, he will be my pick, and he will be my bet. John Lineker versus Francisco Rivera. Ooh wee The difference here will be the chin. So John Lineker's chin um, is much better than Francisco Rivera's, especially with the extra 10 pounds. That's going to be huge for him. So I really like John Lineker here. He will be the bet. He will be the pick. I've got him winning by knockout in round one. The next fight, uh, Jessica Andrade versus Raquel Pennington. Ah, man, at first I was... Going back and forth on this one, but ultimately I got to go with Andraj. Andraj by decision, but it's a do not bet. If I had to bet it, I'd probably bet the fight going to the decision, but uh, do not bet. Clay Collard versus Tiago Dos Santos or Tiago Trator. I got to go with Collard here. Uh, Trator, for me, really hasn't shown me much. Um, he's got, comes in with that big padded record but ultimately hasn't shown anything and clay collard to me has i like clay collard um i like the way he fights i think he's got uh good skills he's very young so clay collard by decision is my pick and he will also be my bet joe riggs versus ron stallings i don't know if this fight's going to take place i really don't count on it taking place but i gotta go with ron stallings here for sure i wish i could bet him but the line got pulled and uh, I don't even think the fight will happen. But if it is, I got Ron Stallings winning by knockout in round two. And <laughs> Nazareno Malegaria versus Joaquim Silva. Wow, what a do not bet. What a way to start the night with a do not bet. I cannot bet that fight. And I can't recommend you bet the fight either. Uh, if I had to bet, if I had to pick it, I'll go with Malegaria. But, uh, Malegaria, but... Um, I do not bet. I, I just wouldn't touch that fight at all if I were you. And let's look at the MMA dogs bets. So my bets for UFC 191. I've got zero five stars, zero four stars, but I've got a bunch of three star picks. Jimmy Manu at plus five ten. Corey Anderson at plus one twenty five. Clay Collard at minus one twenty five. John Lineker at minus one thirty. Andre Arlovsky at minus one fifty. Demetrius Johnson. Uh, minus 5.5 points at minus 240, and Paul Felder at minus 430. So all these lines you can find um, at 5dimes.eu and at bookmaker.eu at uh, 11, 11.30ish, 11.15ish Pacific Standard Time on 8.415. So for the bets, MMA dog bets, one unit equals 1% 1 of the bankroll. The ratio remains the same whether you want to increase it or decrease it. I recommend keeping it keeping it the same because there's a rhyme and reason for the bets. So my bets, I've got Paul Felder parlayed with Andre Arlovsky. So Felder at minus 430, Arlovsky at minus 150. That equals plus 105. 1.5 units to win 1.58 units. Paul Felder and Demetrius Johnson at minus 5.5 points. So Felder at minus 430, 
dj at minus 240, that equals minus 134. So 2.10 units to win 1.57. Jimmy Manuel at plus 510, two units to win 10.20 units. Jimmy Manuel scorecards equal no action. So that means that if the fight goes to decision, uh, it's no action. Scorecards equal no action. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a push. At plus 503, so 0.30 units to win 1.51 units. Jimmy Manawa, plus 3.5 points, plus 320, so 0.30 units at 0.96 units. Now, the reasoning behind that is if if Johnson wins, it could be one of those situations where uh, they go at it, and then in round three, they're both pretty gassed, but Johnson lays on top and uses his Neil Melanson uh, training and just stays on top, goes for submission, doesn't get him. It just kind of drags it out, but Jimmy wins a wins a one round on all judges scorecards. So then, you know that would be a nice little recovery there. So that's the reasoning behind that. Also got John Lineker at minus one thirty three point four zero units to win two point six two units. And I've got a round robin of twos. So it's only three parlays this time at point six zero units each. So the total bet is one point eight. Zero units to win 4.07 units. Now, this is a lot of info, so this is all on text file for the clients. Every client gets a text file. They get to see it, copy it, make the same uh, bets if they'd like, increase it, decrease it, whatever you want to do, but stay, stick to the script. So Corey Anderson at plus 125, Clay Collar at minus 125, and DJ at minus 5.5 points. Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson at minus 240. So three parlays at 0 0.60 units each. Um, a little bit, 1.80 units to win 4.07 units. And the last bet is Jimmy Manuel by submission. I can't believe I almost forgot that one. A tenth of a unit to win 1.77 units. So a grand total, 11 and a half units to win 24.28 units. 211% return on investment. So that does it for me. Thank you very much for tuning in. A very special thank you to all of our clients. We really appreciate your business. My dog's working hard on the website and uh, making sure everything's running smooth. And I'm working hard watching the fight film, listening to all the interviews, um, separating the, the real from the bullshit. And um, that's it. So I hope you guys all have a great Labor Day. I hope that we are all hooting and hollering when Jimmy Manoa beats Anthony Johnson. And if that doesn't happen, there's still plenty of other opportunities for us to make money. So I'm um, glad you bought this. If you didn't, give it a shot. It uh, it'll definitely will be worth your time. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing free in life. So um, that, that wraps it up. Hope you guys all have a great week, Labor Day. Um, hope you guys have a great time with your families. And uh, I hope you guys all take care.